Democrats. Here's what I believe. I believe that entering 2024, the most important decision that you can make as you're listening to this today is to embrace a seeking God lifestyle this year. Thank you for tuning in to the Devoted Life Podcast. I'm Justin Kendrick, and I am so excited to be with you today. The goal is to give you 30 minutes of content that every month will ignite your faith, deepen your devotion to Jesus. We're going to release a new podcast at the end of every month. It's going to come out the last Thursday of every month through 2024. And I'm hoping that this content is helpful for you in your commitment to Christ, in your love for the Lord. I want to encourage you to like it, subscribe it, share it, allow us to reach more people through the content. I got some guests with us today, but before we get into that, I just want to officially welcome you to episode one. And I want to start with some disturbing news for all the followers of Jesus, all those who are committed in their life to walking with Christ. I have to tell you that you have been lied to. Maybe not directly and maybe not overtly, but at least the communication has been misleading that uh, there's a dirty little secret out there in the American church in the Western uh, expression of Christian faith, evangelical church. And that is the, uh, the secret that to know God, to walk with God, to learn his voice, to be transformed by his grace, all of these things take a lot of time. Now, uh, now I know that, you know, probably for the last 50 years, our culture has been obsessed with this idea that you can microwave a relationship with Jesus. As everything moves faster, as culture gets busier and busier and people add more to their plates, it's school sports, it's multiple jobs, it's this, it's that, it's social media, on and on and on. As we advance consistently in technology, uh, we get this mindset that we've adopted as followers of Christ, and that is that I can just spend a couple of moments in prayer, a couple of moments seeking God, and, uh, and, you know, everything in my life is just going to click and work out. And, and pastors honestly have fed into this in a lot of senses. We teach our congregations to do five-minute devotionals, our daily bread, Jesus calling, on and on and on. Listen to a worship song in your car on the way to work, and everything's going to be great. And for a lot of followers of, of Jesus right now, the truth is your spiritual life is kind of a mess that you don't have the peace that surpasses all understanding. You don't have joy unspeakable and full of glory. These are promises found throughout the Bible that are just not real for a lot of Christians. And, uh, and they seem distant. They seem far away. And the truth is that we can't uh, substitute seeking God as a lifestyle for a quick fix, meet for a few minutes. And you think about it, if I'm going to give eight to 10 hours of my day to the technology, to the social media, to the TV, to the onslaught of communication that is our culture, I can't give eight to 10 minutes a day to seeking God. And so knowing God takes time. So in this Devoted Life podcast, the first episode, I want to uh, take a minute and just consider a question today. And that is how different might your life be if you embraced what we're going to call a seeking God lifestyle. Now, you've probably heard of quiet time. You've probably heard of devotions. If you've been a Christian back in the 90s, they used to call it quiet time, but we have different names for this stuff now. But uh, but I want to call it today a seeking God lifestyle because a seeking God lifestyle infers that I'm not adding a little section of my day to Jesus, but instead I'm actually building my day around Jesus. I want to know him. I want to walk with him. I'm going to reorient my time and my day around seeking God. And I just want to get this out here. If you're familiar with our ministry, familiar with what we do, I am not advocating asceticism for the sake of earning points with God. It's not that I'm going to, you know, sacrifice this and do that so that I can, you know, earn more of God's favor. No, no, the favor of God comes on you by grace through Jesus and the cross, the empty tomb. But asceticism gets a bit of a bad rep to be asceticism means self-discipline or self-denial uh, for the sake of some spiritual good. And, uh, and I have to just say that that's not all bad, right? I love what Dietrich Bonhoeffer said. He said that if there is no element of asceticism in our lives, if we give free reign to the desires of the flesh, we shall find it hard to train for the service of Christ. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have to actually discipline ourselves to some degree in order to really see the truths of Jesus get into my heart and become a reality in my soul. So here's what I believe. I believe that entering 2024, the most important decision that you can make as you're listening to this today 
is to embrace a seeking God lifestyle this year above everything else. So what does it look like? We're going to get into that today with some of my friends and, uh, and it's going to be good. But uh, a quick little story. When I was a kid, I remember uh, I had a guy that I really looked up to. He was a couple years older than me and his name's Nick. And I, I was just talking to Nick about knowing the voice of God and walking with God. And I remember he sat me down and this little conversation changed my life. He said, Justin, those who find God find time. Mm -hmm. He said, if you want to know God, if you really want to know him, you have to find time. You have to find time to seek him, to understand his voice, to wrestle with the scriptures, not just through a podcast, not just while you're driving, but you have to actually find time. And it's hard. It's hard. I remember when I first started trying to pray and trying to read the Bible, it was so overwhelming and confusing. And I, I'd make it like five minutes and then all my little dysfunctions would kick in and I'd get distracted and frustrated and anxious. And it took me a long time and a lot of attempts before seeking God became natural. But, but let me just give a couple of quick tips and then we're going to dive into what this could look like in your life this year. But I want to encourage you as you think about a seeking God lifestyle first, to make seeking God the first thing you do every day. Why? Because whatever you do first, it has compound effects. And so maybe you like to take your dog for a walk first, or maybe you like to go to the gym first, or maybe you like to, you know, uh, check your phone first. Mm -hmm. I want to challenge you that seeking God first is essential to really calibrating your heart. Mm -hmm. And so what does it mean to live a seeking God lifestyle? It first means that he's going to be my priority every day. That when I wake up, I made a commitment in 2024. I just decided that every day, the first thing I'm going to do is get on my knees, actually physically get on my knees. And it's, it's shifting me in a really unique way because it's just a physical uh, demonstration of a, of a spiritual reality, you know, that, that I'm actually making him first. The second thing I want to challenge you to do is, is set aside enough time so that seeking God is uncomfortable. And we'll talk a little bit about time today. How much time should I set aside and all of that? But I want to challenge you, set aside enough time that it's uncomfortable. So if 10 minutes is uncomfortable, that's a good place to start. If 20 minutes is really uncomfortable, try that. If 30 minutes or an hour are uncomfortable, but you also have to make it possible, right? You can't be like, I'm going to set aside four hours. Like, well, you got to go to work, you know? And so, and so that's not really going to happen. But, um, and then the third thing, and we're going to dive into this too, is make a plan ahead of time. What am I going to do? when I'm seeking God? How am I going to pray? What am I going to pray? What am I going to read? What am I not going to read? Set a plan ahead of time. You wouldn't go into a workout with no plan, right? You wouldn't go into work. Some of you are like, yeah, I do. You wouldn't go into work with no plan. Uh, but uh, make seeking God uh, something that you actually plan out. And if you do these things, you make it first, you set aside an uncomfortable amount of time, and you actually have a plan for prayer, for Bible study, for seeking Him, I can tell you this for sure, that the result of making a Seeking God lifestyle primary in 2024 will be the slow and often imperceptible transformation of your inner life. Mm. Things like peace, things like confidence, things like hope, things like a self-assurance when you're around other people that you maybe don't know that well. And you'll look back and you'll say, wow, the most important thing I did this year was seek God. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it a little bit. I've got two amazing people here. The first, I married my wife. I love Christina Rose. So thanks for joining me today on this me. podcast. And then the great Joey Silva is in the house, our creative pastor here at Vox. And, uh, and I pulled Joey in because uh, you and I have walked together mm -hmm. as friends for a long, long time since you were in your early uh, teens. And so, um, so thanks for being here, guys. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Thanks for, for hanging out with me for a little while. I want to ask you this. Um, as you look at your life, and I know that both of you have been practicing a Seeking God lifestyle for a long time, uh, when you think about your own life, how has your inner life been changed? When you look like, hey, how has God used my quiet time or my time in prayer or whatever it might be to actually change my, my inner life? Um, babe, why don't you share a little bit about that? Yeah. You know, on my drive-in here this morning, I passed a letter board sign on a church and it said daily devotions are better than yearly resolutions. Oh, that's good. And it, it, it paused me as I was just like in my train of thought, thinking about this podcast, thinking about what we we're going to talk about this morning. And I thought, you know, that is, that is so much what 
time with the Lord every day has done for, for my own mm, heart. You know, yeah. you think about a yearly resolution, you think about, you know, January rolls around and people think, okay, how can I make myself better? How can yeah. I make my physical body better? How can I make my, my mind better? How can I this? How can I that? And I think that for me, I, I think about that phrase, right? Daily devotion is better than yearly resolutions. And it has been the transformation of my life has what mm. I desire, mm. what I want, who I think I want to be yep. is all different in the light of who Jesus is inside of me, yep. which is discovered in daily time set aside with him. And so yep. my priorities are different. What I think I want yeah. has yeah. shifted wow. because I realize I just want Jesus. Yeah. Mm. I, I just want him. And so everything else really does pale in comparison mm. to my desire and my need and acknowledging like I I am nothing and have nothing apart from who he yeah. is. So Yeah, I love so like you go back in church history, right? Augustine talked about disordered loves mm -hmm. and how disordered loves were really the root problem mm -hmm. of the human heart. And what he meant by that was that like we love lesser things more mm -hmm. and greater things less. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's like, well, I should love God the most, but the truth is I love vacation the most. Or, you know, I should love uh, prayer the most, but the truth is I love lunch the most, you know? And so it's like, so we just, we have all these things and it messes yep. everything up, right? So like if it's good to love your job, but if you love your job more than your family, mm -hmm. you're going to actually destroy your family, mm -hmm. right? For the sake of your job. And so disordered loves is actually like the root problem in life, period. You know, when you could really sum up all of life that way. But I think that for me, in my time with God, you know, the human condition is just one of natural disorder. Mm -hmm. And so I go to my time of prayer and I don't even know that my loves are disordered, but they are. Yep. And as I take time to be alone with God, what ends up happening is he starts rearranging yeah. the heart yeah. where it's like now I start loving him more and loving the approval of that person yeah. less. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And within that time, and again, you know, those who find God find time. And so if you're listening to this and you're like, oh yeah, I do devotions. Well, it's time to take it to another level. Like maybe you do 10 minutes or 15 minutes with the Lord. I want to challenge you, set aside an hour, set aside 40 minutes, do something that just messes up your morning, try it for 21 days mm -hmm. and watch how your yeah. entire life changes because now that insecurity, you like, I don't have the time. You're burning that time mm -hmm. in worry and trying to make people happy yeah. and running around doing yeah. silly things. So if you just redirected it to seeking God, he would work those things out in yes. your heart and then you'd actually have a lot more time for other things That's in your life. True. So that this idea of disorder loves, I know for me, that has been a real mm -hmm. inner life change. Joy, what about you? As you've looked at your time with God, how has how has uh, God worked on your inner life? Yeah, in every way. Yeah. We were joking right yeah. before this podcast, yeah. like, um, when I don't have time with God, was was my day like? And it's not good. Mm -hmm. My inner, like my, my uh, confidence, like you said, yep. fears, yep. Uh, you know, worries, anxiety in itself yep. um, is has has shifted so much when I have that time with him. And you said something earlier about this isn't earning God's favor. Yes. Like God loves me. Yeah. I need that time for me, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I find God, but then I also find like who I am yes. yep. in God. Um, and so what does it look like? My inner life is like more peaceful. It's more like secure and like what he says over me, over my yep. family. Um, and yet, like, I think, you know, for years it's been, uh, a good amount of time. I'm in a season of life with a baby, and then every once in a while, it's good. Yeah. my time is not as long as, as I want it to be. And I've had to figure out creative ways to go, God, I still need this time. Yeah. I still want this time. Yep. Um, and I, you know, in order to not be a miserable person <laughs> yeah. or a fearful yeah. person, yeah. Um, but a, a person like so connected to the heart of God, um, you know, what does that look like? Um, and so, yeah, it's to answer your question, it's like changed. Like all, I'm more loving. <laughs> yep. um, I'm more aware of others and yep. less aware of myself. I think that's another big piece too. Is like it gives me a perspective of me. Um, not only in like a God loves me way, yep. but in I'm a I'm I'm not as big as I think I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. not as in yeah. you know right side. The issues of yeah. my life are God cares deeply about them. Yeah, and also like taking time to focus off of myself and read the Word and pray for other people or pray for other situations. Yep. Um, makes me smaller yeah. in a healthy way yeah it's huge yeah. wow that's good i want to talk a little bit about what this looks like right because yeah. maybe maybe you're uh listening to this right now and you're a follower of jesus and the truth is you've never really made seeking god 
a priority in your daily schedule. You go to church, you know, like you you kind of you kind of like love when a good sermon or a good worship time happens, but like you haven't replicated that in your own personal life. And and listen, if that's where you're at, we're not throwing stones. That's where 99% of American mm-hmm. Christians are at, right? But I want to challenge you to actually begin to set aside time. So maybe it's 15 minutes where you say, I'm going to start my day every 15 minutes. And when you don't do it, when you sleep through it, there's no condemnation. It's not about that. It's about taking that next step. Or maybe you've been doing like the little our daily bread thing in the morning. And now it's time to actually build out like a robust hour or 45 minutes where you are rearranging your morning to seek God. And I think there's a lot of Christians that that's exactly where you are. That like this is your time, and I just want to prophesy over you as you listen to this podcast. 2024 is your time mm. where you actually begin to take responsibility for your own spiritual growth. And mm. you say, it's not my pastor's job. It's not the church's job. It's not some distant preacher in another state who preaches great sermons job. I'm going after God. Like, mm. I'm learning who he is. I'm going to find him. Remember, the scripture says, if you will draw near to God, he will draw near to you. What a crazy promise. Uh, Jeremiah says, you'll seek me and you'll find me, says the Lord, when you search for me with all your heart. Mm. And so uh, what what do you do in your time with God, right? So I set aside an hour every morning. That's always my goal. And if I miss it or whatever, I'm not going to condemn myself, but it's it's a discipline of my life. And uh, and so, you know, like, I mean, this morning I woke up a little late. I didn't get a full hour in, right? So that does happen, okay? But but it's the norm for me to get along with Jesus for an hour. And uh, And for me, there's really two basic sections. The first is prayer, and the second is the Bible, reading the Bible, okay? And I want to encourage you to uh, experiment with those two sections, and we'll talk a little bit about them today. But but when we talk about prayer, uh, that can be a little overwhelming, right? Uh, I often will start my prayer time with thanks. I'll try to find 10 things that I'm really thankful for, and I'll actually just say them out loud to God on my knees, and then surrender. So thanks and surrender. And then I'll oftentimes pray the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, right? Or I'll pray Psalm 23, uh, and I'll just I'll just pray through some some kind of rote prayers, some prayers that I I already know that kind of get myself moving. And then for me, I like to go wide to small. So I start to pray for the world that the world would be saved. I actually pray for countries and continents, and and then I begin to pray for our nation, our leaders, and then I begin to pray for New England because God put me here mm-hmm. to see this region change, and I believe that. And then I begin to pray for our church and then our family. See how we're just getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? And then I begin to pray for uh, friends and then for myself. I pray for things that I need. Mm -hmm. And that's just for me, like a a kind of a prayer funnel that I often use. And then at the end of that, I'll often use two tools. And I'll just throw these out there. Again, these are all just fodder for your experimentation. I'll do a time of examine, where the examine is an ancient practice, where you really just, the, the, the primary tools for the examine are to ask yourself, hey, in the last 24 hours, where did I love well? Where did I fail to love well? Those are really convicting. I'll actually write those down. I'll journal those. Where did I love well? Where did I fail to love well? And then I have some other questions that I'm asking myself right now in my exam. And, and I try to do that every day. Where did I, where did I express humility? Where did I express pride? Uh, where did I use power for self and power for others? And this is just a time for me to process where I'll repent to God. I'll ask for forgiveness. If he brings to my memory someone I have to go say I'm sorry to, Mm. I'll go to them after my quiet time. And so for me, this is just like a heart cleansing thing. And then uh, I'll usually do three to five minutes of just silence. And I'll actually set an alarm on my phone and just do three to five minutes where I'm just welcoming the Holy Spirit and quieting my soul. And, And honestly, that is like sometimes my favorite time in quiet time is that is that five minutes of just silence and then I open God's word and right now and you guys could talk about what you've been doing but right now I'm doing like one psalm and I'm learning to pray the psalms that's a whole thing I won't get into now and then and then uh, another section of the scripture so right now I'm in the gospel of Mark and so uh so those are some of the that's like a frame for me and, and that generally takes about an hour and then I'll write down things that I'm learning in that and, uh, and kind of go from there. But, but that's like a little frame for you that may not be the way that you exactly do it. Part of learning a Seeking God lifestyle is actually experimentation, just kind of figuring out, setting the time aside and just saying, God, I want to meet with you. And so I just gave like a really basic frame, but um, Chrissy and Joey, give me like a hack. What's one thing that you've learned mm. in Seeking God that you go, man, this, if, if you were just starting out, 
seeking God, you wish someone told you this, mm -hmm. you know, like something that's working. Uh, go ahead, Joey. What do you got? What's what's happening? Yeah, I um I would grab a journal yeah. alongside with a Bible. Yeah. Um, you know, I've always needed somewhere to put like my thoughts, put what God is maybe speaking to me, a verse that really uh, sticking out. But probably five years ago, I feel like I got a little freed from like I needed God's looking at my journal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need to write down the verse and the three things I got out of it, right. which isn't wrong. Yeah, yeah. But um. It's also been a really great way of like connecting, even like in prayer, yeah. writing down my prayers. What, are, what what's happening in my heart, Lord, and how can I just process it with you on paper? It's good. Um, has been a huge help because then it gets that it's somewhere, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Yep. And that allows me to like then move into you know Bible reading or or, or another another um uh, you know opportunity to hear His voice. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's good. Journaling is big thing. Yeah, and I think just on that journaling idea, you know, for me, I'm not like a let me write five pages of my feelings, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. you do that more than I do and just processing that way. So I really struggled with journaling because I felt like, oh, I don't want to do that. You know, mm -hmm. it was like a really like not me. And then when I first started, I would do like, let me write down every single thing I learned. And I yeah. remember like as a new Christian, every verse was something I learned. Yeah. And so I'd, I would literally read five verses in 40 minutes and I would write down, it was so legalistic and I think what you said just about being like free yeah. in your journaling, um, that's huge. I remember my wife showed me like something that she, the Lord was speaking to her and I like, it like blew my mind. Like that's how you journal. Uh, like it was like, <laughs> you're just, you're writing whatever's Literated. happening, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so like letting it be free, letting yeah. it be something that draws you closer to God and not feel like a checkbox. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. Two things I think for me that have been really, really helpful. One is if you are listening and you are a parent with young kids, mm -hmm. Being flexible is so important. And this yeah. is something that I got really stuck on, I think, in early parenthood where I would wake up before my kids, like, I've got my time. And then, you know, three out of five times, one of the kids is waking up yeah. and, like, Circus. things have to change. And, you know, I have such like deeply rooted memories of as a kid myself waking up and seeing my parents sitting in the living room reading the word yep. and having their time with God. And I think for me, this is something that has actually liberated me in my time with the Lord that, yes, this is time that is sacred for me and Jesus. It's it's private and it's yep. special. And like, it's also part of setting an example for my own children. Yeah, and so there are a lot of mornings right now where our four-year-old, the last 10 minutes of my quiet time, yeah. she's snuggled up in bed with me yeah. and I'm reading aloud to her whatever it is that I'm mm. reading in scripture. Second Chronicles chapter <laughs> seven. Yeah. She was yeah. like, can you read this? I was like, okay, here yeah. we go. Yeah. And you know, that is something that I think for me has, has, has loosened mm. um, just this like box of like, it has to look like this. Yeah. That quiet time has to look like a certain way. And, um, gosh, does, does God not see where I'm at in my life? Like he yeah. knows I am a, I'm a mother and I'm responsible for these kids. And my greatest responsibility is to demonstrate a life in pursuit of Christ. Wow. And so, so having, having that like, okay, well, the last 10 minutes is not going to be spent in silence and solitude. That's right. You know, it's with a little girl with morning breath snuggled up next to me yeah. while, while I read. And so just being flexible around like sometimes interruptions are going to come, but don't get stuck on it. Yep. Like invite the Lord into that as well. And then I think for me, uh, a huge piece of having consistency in my quiet time is having that that well thought through plan, which Justin, you mentioned yeah, earlier. Good. But if I don't have a plan, I, I'm aimless and I'm wandery and I end up feeling very frustrated in my time with God. And I feel mm. like I struggle to hear his voice mm. if I don't know what, what, how am I spending my time today? Yep. And it doesn't mean I always have it written out to the minute, but I, I have a direction that I'm going to go. And yep. so if there, if there are those times where I don't have a plan, uh, I have this folder, which I'm sure you're going to talk about your folder, yep. Justin, yep. but I have folder. a folder that I keep that I have just five to 10 different confessions, things rooted in mm. scripture, yeah. truths that I speak over myself, things that I pray specifically over my family. If I get stuck, some days you're just stuck yeah. and you don't know what yeah. do I want to pray? What do no I want to say? Yep. Yeah. And so rather than stall out, I go to something that I've yeah, already thought through some of it, uh, verses that are like life verses mm -hmm. for me that I will speak over myself, speak over my family. Uh, and then John 15 and Psalm 91, those are my like mm -hmm. fail safe chapters yeah. in scripture. So if I don't know, like, where am I going? What am I reading today? Abiding in Christ, yeah. dwelling in the presence of God. Those are those places and knowing this is where I can go back to if I feel stuck or yeah. if I don't have a plan, those have been really helpful for me. Yeah. yeah. And you're you're reading through the Bible this year, which we've never well, done. That's the next question. Oh, my bad. Okay. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, but that's that's a yeah. pretty cool, that's a pretty ambitious thing, you know? And so when we're doing our time, like a lot of times we're reading these crazy, like, <laughs> hey, let's go to, you know, 
whatever it might be, Malachi. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. We're in Malachi now. But yeah, that's, and that's been, that's been awesome to watch you just like take on that discipline and, and really uh, commit yourself to it. And so, you know, as you're listening to this, you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, what am I going to add, right? Like if my time with God is stale or if it's kind of non-existent, listen, if you're here and you're saying, yeah, I usually kind of sort of have time with the Lord, I want to encourage you first, just increase the time, right? Like those who find God find time, just make more space and time and not out of guilt, not out of asceticism, not to like earn favor with God, but simply out of the discipline of creating space for relationship. Okay. And so that's the first thing. But if you put aside some time now, it's time to like, actually, like I was talking to somebody the other day and they were so scared of the Bible, you know, it's like, oh, I can't understand this and I'll never really grasp it. And it's like, that is not true. All right. You have the Holy Spirit. Okay. He wrote the book. So you're literally sitting with the author Mm. and he's going to explain it to you. And so uh, you don't need some guy or gal with a PhD Mm. sitting next to you to explain the Bible. You can understand God's word yourself and just begin to wrestle with it. Mm. Begin to ask questions of God. And here's what I know. He will answer your questions if you ask. Yeah, can I interject real quickly to that? Yeah. I think something that is also really important that this that is a hack, if you will, is don't compare yourself and your time with God to somebody else's. I got really stuck on that. I think especially early on in our marriage where yep. we're very different in our, yeah, but we're also just really different in the way that we approach Yep. the heart of God. We we connect with him different because we are different people. Yeah. And so yeah. like allowing yourself the freedom to discover yeah. how do I connect yeah. with God? How do I connect with his word? How do I hear from him? And each person hears the Lord differently, right? Yeah. Like he speaks to us in our spirit. He speaks to us through scripture, but it, it comes through different channels, if yeah. you will, yeah. right? Like I'm a very visual person. Oftentimes God will give me a picture in my mind yep. or I'll yep. just have like a sense in my spirit, right? And yep. so That's to good. allow yourself the freedom, don't compare yourself yeah. to what somebody else is doing in their time with God. If you're having it, if you're making time to be with Jesus, that's what plays Something's going to happen. Yeah, something's going to happen, and yep. that's where he takes pleasure. Yep. It's just in that time. And you, you have, like, non-negotiables, like time. Right. Right. You, know, right. you have non-negotiables, right. like the Bible. Right. The Bible. Right. Right. <laughs> right, right. But, like, if yeah. sitting at a desk isn't working for you, yeah. get on like, a couch. I, I, every once in a while, I'll, like, get to the ocean or yeah. get to yeah. a forest or get yep. somewhere else because yep. maybe that doesn't work for someone else, but that does really work for yeah. me. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. That's good. That is really good. Yeah, and I'll add to that. So, you know, as you think about your tools and your tool belt for time with God, you need a Bible, you need a journal, like Joey said, Uh, You also, I would really encourage you to have a folder. And this has been a big thing for me. If you've been around me, I've talked around about this a lot, but, but my folder comes with me really everywhere I go. And it's a collection of prophetic words that God has really spoken to my heart over the years. It's a collection of confessions, things that I'm decreeing over my life for that year, uh, scriptures that I'm memorizing. Uh, I've even kind of worked through like five year goals and 10 year goals a 10 year vision of who I want to be. It's kind of embarrassing, but I heard uh, an interview with Matthew McConaughey, which uh, was not about Jesus. And he said, they said, who do you look up to in life? And he said, I look up to me in 10 years. Mm. And I thought, wow, that's actually, that's actually a really, it was a worthwhile thing to snag because, because he was like the vision that I have of who I am in 10 years, that's who I look up to. And so it inspired me to actually write down a 10 year vision of myself. Who do I want to be on the inside? Who do I want to be as a man? Mm. And so I, I reflect on that probably once or twice a week. That's in my folder. Um, all kinds of different things that God has brought me through uh, are in this folder. And, uh, and so people I'm praying for to come to Jesus, their names, mm. they're in this folder. Um, specific faith prayers that have been on my heart, ways that God has tested me, ways, lists of ways that I've seen his faithfulness. Mm, good. Yeah. And so whenever you get like a little piece of gold from Jesus, stick it in a folder. Yeah. Mm. Stick it in a folder and you'll find that in a year, You've actually got to send it out because there's too many things in there yeah. and and you keep it with you. And like Chrissy said, when when the engine's like stuck in neutral, mm. you go to the folder and it, it sparks you. Yeah. It kind of creates some fresh life. And so uh, kind of closing thought, what's one thing that you're doing? And they will go to you first because you're going to talk about reading the Bible through a year. But uh, what's one thing that you're doing right now that's that's kind of clicking? It's kind of working for you. Yeah, I'm cover to cover reading through the Bible, which I've never done it this way before ever. I've been following Jesus for 
30 something years yeah. and I have yeah, never gone following Jesus. <laughs> I have never gone start to finish cover to cover yeah. and I'm I'm doing it with a friend which yeah. that accountability and that like camaraderie cuz it's it's hard some days I'm like oh my gosh I don't want to be in second yeah. chronicles right yeah, now yeah, like yeah. just give me the psalms or yeah. like give me first peter and you know the discipline of of reading the assigned section has been actually incredibly mm. life-giving for me oh, and it's forming good. things in me um, that I've I've never cultivated before, and the accountability piece, and just having a buddy to go through it with is is really really good. What is God speaking to you today? Did you skip today? Are we on Are we on That's target good. with one another? Has been has been really really good and really life giving. How about you, Joey? What's been working? One yeah, thing. I have two little ones. Well, okay, we'll do two. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but like just creating a space where like it even makes your like heart like hungry for the Lord uh, you know that's good so whether it's like some days I know I'm leaving the house and spending time with God somewhere else yep. or um we have a room in my house right now and I like light a candle you know and it's like yeah. it makes it just a, a little bit more of like I'm eager my physical self my yeah. mind is yeah. eager to like hear and meet with Brian always talks about his prayer chair he's got like yeah. his chair yeah um and then the second one's you know more spiritual or whatever but um in the busyness of life i've been trying probably for like the past three months now what am i reading what have i read this morning and what's a tiny thing i can hold on to yeah. um even this yeah. morning i um good. I was in romans 12 i think and verse 9 says let your love be genuine so i, I found myself well, i guess you can call it a breath prayer yeah. or just a small like thought like am i genuinely loving today it's about That's one good. o'clock at eight o'clock when i'm putting yeah. the kids to bed am i genuinely loving and so what what am i reading you know the word is alive and active and so what am I reading in this morning time that can carry me through the, through the whole day? And it's not a big chunk of scripture, but it's a phrase or an idea or a thought. Mm. Love it. Love it. Closing thought today. I just want you to imagine what life could look like if followers of Jesus all just actually did this. Like, what if we actually embraced a seeking God lifestyle as the primary pursuit of our lives? Thank you for joining us for this episode. Keep a eye out for the February episode. The topic is going to be prayer. Uh, it's going to be exciting. I got some really important stuff to dive into, get a little deeper in that. Again, if this content is helpful, I just encourage you like it, share it, subscribe. And wherever you find yourself today, you're listening to this podcast, turn to Jesus, turn to him, invite him to stir your heart, yeah. to focus your attention on mm -hmm. him. Because here's one thing I am convinced of that every moment you spend devoting yourself to Jesus is not a moment that you'll regret. Thanks for joining us today. Switching.